Hi and welcome to this lesson where we are discussing Newton's first law of motion. So what is Newton's first law of motion? Well, it states that an object in rest or at rest will stay in rest and an object in uniform motion, that's to say at uh, a constant velocity, will stay in uniform motion unless it is compelled to change by forces acting upon it. Okay, so I'm sure you didn't really follow that, so let me just give you a brief e explanation. When an object is moving, okay, here's an object moving in space or anywhere, okay, that object is moving at a constant velocity, so velocity is constant, and it will continue to move at that constant velocity forever and ever and ever in a straight line unless some force causes it to slow down okay or speed up or change direction okay so for example if we are pushing a car on the road so there's our car okay and we give it a, a slight shove okay we give it a slight shove we know that it's going to move for a while maybe if we're that strong it's going to move for a while but then it's simply going to come to rest at some point okay why is that okay shouldn't it stay in motion well this time no for one there is weight acting on the car another there's the normal force by the surface acting on the car another thing is friction that is opposing its motion okay that's acting on the car so there's a bunch of forces acting on it that's why it stopped if this car was in space where, the, where it has no weight, where it has no um, object touching it, except the person giving it a slight shove and after that letting it go, and there's no drag, uh, even though even in space there's a little bit drag, did you know that? Anyways, let's assume there's no drag, give it a slight shove and it will continue to move forever and ever at that constant velocity okay? that we gave it by pushing to, on it. The same goes for an object that's standing still. Okay, if we have an object like a, um, let's say, a cupboard, this is my ugly cupboard again, okay, there it is, drawers maybe, okay, there's a cupboard, okay, it's standing still, okay, there's no forces acting on it. In this case, maybe there is, maybe it's got weight and it's got normal force, uh, of the surface it's standing on but these two cancel each other out so there's no resultant force acting on it and therefore there's absolutely no change in its position its direction anything it's just standing um, at, it's just staying at rest okay so it would be very interesting to go and see what happens in space when objects are floating around in space and for that uh, reason after this video I've added some videos so that you can see how astronauts are actually uh, operating in space. Have a look, it's quite interesting. Okay. Now, one of the conclusions of all this is actually a different name that, that this law also gets. It's the law of inertia. The law of inertia. Okay, so what is inertia? Inertia is simply an object's resistance to change in its motion. So we know that an object at rest, not moving, okay, velocity equal to zero, will stay at rest, and an object in motion, okay, is something in motion, velocity equal to something, will stay at that uniform velocity unless an external force acts on it. Which means that an object that's at rest wants to stay at rest and an object in motion wants to stay at that uniform motion unless a force acts on it. And when a force does act on it, it has a resistance against that force. So a very good example of this is that when a car pulls away, if you imagine this person sitting in a car, that is suddenly accelerating, what happens? Well, his head gets jerked back, isn't it? Chilly. Everything would get jerked back if it wasn't for the seat. Okay, the seat is quite solid. But actually, once I was standing at a robot, there I was, 
Just waiting for the light to turn green. Okay. When a car rammed into my into the back of my car. Okay, so there this car. Car came and rammed into the back of my car. And because of the sudden change in my motion, that force was so strong that my seat actually broke. Okay. My whole upper body had such a resistance against that force that it completely broke my seat. That sucked. Okay. And then when I fixed my seat, I fixed it too straight up. So now I look very odd. Okay. Anyways, the point I'm trying to make is that initially everything was at rest. Everything in this car was at rest. And then when all of a sudden the motion changes, everything still wants to be at rest. But things are starting to move. So things are kind of dragging behind in order to try and catch up with the sudden change in motion. The same goes for someone maybe standing in a bus. Okay, so imagine here's some guy standing in a, in a bus holding on to a railing. Okay. And all of a sudden this bus stops. What happens? Well, it almost seems like he falls forward. Why? Because the person was in motion. He was traveling along with the bus in the direction that the bus was traveling. If the bus all of a sudden stops, his own body, his head, his upper body, even his feet somewhat, and his suitcase, everything was still in motion and resisted the change of the sudden stop and therefore everything falls forward. Because according to Newton, things in motion wants to stay in motion, things at rest wants to stay at rest. There's a bunch of examples. Another very good example is if you imagine your shoe being full of dirt. Okay. That's the bottom of your shoe. I know it almost looks like a stake, but imagine that's the bottom of your shoe. This will help. Okay, that's the bottom of your shoe. It's full of dirt. So what do you do? You stomp it on the ground. Once you stomp your shoe on the ground, your foot has a downward motion. But hitting the ground stops that motion almost immediately. The dirt on your foot has a downward motion. With the sudden stop that the floor provides to your foot, the dirt is still heading downwards. Okay, that is why they are shaken off of your shoes. They're still heading down. Makes intuitive sense, at least to me. Okay, one more example. Okay, this example involves a car. Okay, so there's a car seen from the top. Okay. And what this car is doing is it is going to take a turn. Okay. but it's going to do it quite fast so it's taking the turn but quite at quite a speed so it's changing its direction quite quickly and what happens to the people inside the car well everyone inside this, the car starts leaning towards the outside of this curve okay so they're almost being thrown to the right of this car because it's turning left. Why? Because they were actually still in motion going straight. So when the car is turning uh, on this angle, okay, there you can see the car, not as pretty as my first attempt, okay, but there you see the car. When the car is turning, they still want to be going straight. And because they want to be going straight, and na but now the right side of the car is what is in that direction. They'll be heading to the right side of this car. Well, I hope you got that. Okay, uh, maybe you didn't. Not the worst thing. All you need to know that when an ab object is traveling straight and there are other objects attached to it in the same direction. Okay, traveling with it and that object suddenly changes inertia 
is the effect of those objects that still want to be going straight. And because the thing is turning, it seems like they are moving in the opposite direction of the turn. Uh, but they're not really, they're just actually still trying to go straight. It's not the opposite direction, it's not that direction, to be honest. Okay, but I'm sure you're getting it, and I'm sure you, you understand what I, inertia is, and you actually can give a few examples. Cool, see you in the next video, where we are looking at Newton's second law of motion.